Good morning from Panhandle Outdoors with Winston Chester. Panhandle Outdoors, your source for fishing, hunting, and information for folks who enjoy the great outdoors. Now sit back, relax. It's Panhandle Outdoors. Good morning, folks. Welcome to Panhandle Outdoors. I'm Winston Chester. Glad to hear this Tuesday morning. Hope everybody had a great three-day weekend and most of us are back to work now and we'll get continue now with all kind of outdoor festivities with a celebration of our pictures and all and just talking about outdoors every day here on Panhandle Outdoors so we always appreciate you viewing it. Now our weather brought to us by Haney Technical Center at the corner of Baldwin Road and Highway 77. Run by and check out all the programs they can offer you over there. Uh, that's Principal Mike Epps to take you on a fishing trip if you haven't been lately. He'll, good guy, good folks over there. Now listen, it's going to be uh, cold, the coldest tonight is going to be about 35, so it's going to be, you know, like I said yesterday, typical January weather, high today will be 56, so we've got a big big span there, you know, it's cool in the morning, you need a uh, jacket or coat, and then by 11, 12 o'clock you're ready to warm things up and uh, go in short sleeve, so that's our, like I say, our pattern we have right here, so uh, I mentioned the moon phase, we started yesterday, mentioned it, it's waxing out now, I'm sorry, waning out now for another 11 days, but our tie chart, let's take a look at our tie chart brought to us by Kent Forest Lawn Funeral Home and Cemetery. Again, it's neat tie. Today is January the 21st, just flat out to the next three days. But now on into the weekend, we're going to start getting some good ties. So if you're keeping up with it, low is going to be at 715 and high at 317. So not, not a lot of tidal activity. I'm, I'm looking at the calendar. Folks, next Saturday, not this coming Saturday, but the next Saturday already will be in February. It'll be February the 1st. And the time's flying. 2014 is getting off to a good start. I mean, we just have about all these pictures and all we're getting. We'll have a really good start. But it's hard to believe we're right around the corner from February. Okay? Let's go ahead and uh, take our break now. We'll come back and uh, talk some more. All right, folks. Welcome back. Glad you're with us this morning. We're... I want to show you some pictures. We're going to just get them set up right here. Just went off. They, they timed themselves. Sometimes they go off just as we come back on the air. But now we'll get them set back up. Uh, Y'all are so good about sending in pictures and all. Uh, really uh, fascinating how we've been able to keep up with everything, especially the last year or two. All right, let's talk to this first one here. Uh, been a good deer season. This is Sean, Pitt, Sean Pittman. And Sean is a good hunter, good fisherman. He's always uh, got some stuff going on. It does a good job there. That's a nice buck there, Sean. Good job there. This is a great story here. This is a true story. Now, this is not staged. This is a 78-year-old guy. He lived about 30, in Pennsylvania, uh, south of, about 30 miles south of Harrisburg, Pennsylvania. He passed away, and he wanted. He, he's just an avid outdoorsman. And his family just wanted to take him to his final resting spot in, in a boat. I thought this was just classic. It's, he had five sons, and one of the sons was driving a truck there. And he, uh, all the testimonials on him, he was just an avid, loved outdoors. So I, I think that's a good idea. And uh, the funeral home was just particular to do that. They just thought it was very unique. So a way, that's the way for outdoorsmen to go to his final resting spot. Okay. All right. I thought you'd appreciate it. All right. Here's one of my former students, Zach. Zach McKeith is a good outdoorsman. He's doing, uh, that's a limit right there of uh, redheads. And he, what he, he's been casting and blasting. He's been blasting early in the morning and going fishing in, in when he finishes his uh, duck hunting trip. Good job there, Zach. Now, uh, here's a, okay, here's, Stephanie Parker sent me this. Stephanie teaches me up there and sent me an email. Hey, Coach, just thought I would pass these photos on you. Scott and Clay had some successful hunting in Selma, Alabama over the Christmas break. This is Scott Parker, a nice buck right there. Selma's an excellent area to hunt. I see his son. Uh, this, is, this is really good. He's an eighth grader. Son's an eighth grader there. And uh, they clay and, and they do a, they hunt a lot together, father and son. So they had a good good Christmas vacation. And Stephanie, thank you for sharing these pictures with all of our viewers. Okay, let's uh, go through some panther pictures. Uh, this is not local now. This is in Southwest Florida where the panther population is. I was just able to pull these up because I wanted to. They got the results in I, as I'm talking. I just go through some different pictures. The results in from 2013, the panther deaths dropped from 27 to 20. And one of the reasons they just feel like a uh, driver, drivers. Most of the panther deaths come from drivers. For example, these 20 panther deaths they had this year, uh, we had. I was looking at statistics, and, and one of them, one of them died of natural causes. Uh, three of them were aggression, and one was unknown. I want to say aggression by other panthers. 
and then 15 out of 20 were hit by cars. So that tells you what happens to most, most panthers. But it, the population is still is still healthy in there and doing well. So well, we'll talk more about it. I just uh, good to see the study come back in. Okay, and then here's uh, one outdoor shot, great picture. Ray Wisher sent this of the Panama City Beach Pier. Okay, outdoor photography. Okay, now let's let's get ready. I'm going to uh, be going on a on a St. Vincent hunt. I, I'm going to, uh, for a couple of days here. I, my, Walter and I had our names drawn, so we'll be talking about it. But uh, let's go ahead and introduce our video because I want to make sure we get it covered. We all remember, we may not remember the first fish we caught, and a lot of us now have pictures, especially of our kids catching their first fish, but you know, our generation don't have that many pictures, but I know all of us remember that first buck that we took, and, and now, of course, we have pictures of it, and in some, in some situations, we're fortunate enough to have a video. Well, this is my grandson, Mason. Uh, this is his first buck, and Walter had him in a tree stand up there in, in Raleigh Sales, uh, some of Raleigh Sales property up there off 388 about 20 miles north of town here in Bay County. And, uh, and Mason got to take his first buck, and it, it was a thrill. And he, made, he made a good shot, so we got a little 12-minute video, and, uh, and I know he'll always remember this. So let's sit back and, uh, and enjoy this video, then I'll come back and we'll, we'll wrap it up. It's Saturday, January 11th, and a bad storm just blew through, but it's all cleared up, and we have a perfect wind for the stand, so... I'm hoping I can get a big buck today. from our left to our right. And these young deer came in with the wind at their tails. Older, more mature deer will come into a feeding area from the other direction with the wind in their faces so they can scent check for danger or other animals. A lot of button bucks get shot by hunters thinking they're does, but here's why this one did not get shot. We were able to zoom in with the camera and could see the lighter colored spots where his antlers will come out in the future. His body was small, he looked like a briefcase, and his ears were big in proportion to his head. We had a picture of a good, big buck in the area. The rut was starting to kick in. We didn't have an antlerless deer tag with us, and this deer came in from the wrong side of the wind, showing us he was young and not very wise yet. It's amazing how well God camouflaged deer and other animals. They really are hard to see until they move, and that's how they see us when we move.
We'll be right back with more of Mason's January deer hunt after these messages from our faithful sponsors. Thanks for doing business with them. Those two little bucks left around 4.30, and I was disappointed that I didn't get to shoot one of them. I was sad to be going home without shooting anything. Thanks for watching this episode of Panhandle Outdoors. <laughs> Just kidding. Right around sunset at 5 o'clock, out in front of us about 100 yards, we saw a couple of deer running back and forth. My dad told me that a bigger deer may be running off the smaller deer. He was right. I really like having all these pine trees around, especially when I'm hunting with kids because they give us some good cover. But today, these trees were keeping me from seeing the deer through the camera. At times, I couldn't see him. And at times, I had him in the frame, but I didn't know it. And when I had him in the frame, Mason couldn't see him. And Mason was hunched over on his gun saying, I've got him, Dad. But I kept having to tell him to hang on and to relax because I didn't want him to wear himself out by staying in a hunched over shooting position too long and I could feel him shaking next to me and I didn't know if it was his normal excitement or if his muscles were getting tired from holding the gun. Well Mason did an awesome job being patient and finally the deer walked out where we could both see him at the same time. Stay tuned for the footage of Mason recovering his first deer.
there are some things that you will not want to miss. Let's see how many points he has. One, two, three, four. Yeah, Mason got a four point. That's great. That must be a good scope because he looked a, like he had a bigger rack. That's what they call ground shrinkage. Means when you get to him on the ground, he looks not as big as he did. Like an Indian. <laughs> Tell the deer thank you. Thank you, dear. He's got a jelly belly. <sighs> Indian. No, 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 no. High five. Bloody hand. High five. Yeah. You know what I just did? I just killed a four point. Yeah, you did. Yes, I did. And it actually, yes, ma'am. I'll show you to it when we get home. And um, I have the blood on my face and everything. Are you crying? No, I'm so You sound like you're crying. Just put him on the very back of the truck. Go ahead and grab him. This is heavy. Okay. One, two, three. Now I've got blood literally all over my body. Oh, look at that one. Whoa. Look at that. Man. He's that's almost a, nice a five job. point. Mason, that's a good deer. Nice buck. He's almost a five point. Yeah. Good job, Mason. Good go. job. That is a good shot, too. Good job, Mason. That's a perfect shot. All right, welcome back. Folks, I hope you enjoyed that. I, it's just that genuine excitement in the kid's face, and, and you, you know, you can't hide that excitement. It's, it's reality. We're talking about, you know, real people doing real things here on Panhandle Outdoors, and we're just fortunate, and Walter has gotten really good at his photography. He's a lot better than I am now, and, I, and we've been able to show a lot more hunting videos this year than we've ever had on Panhandle Outdoors, and a lot of thanks goes to him on, on the time and effort. You, you don't realize, and I, I don't want to uh, brag on Walter, but... Most of the time when he do, he'll do a long video, it's about 12 to 15 hours of, of, of editing and all. So it, it takes a lot of time to put together quality videos. That's why these people on the outdoor shows hire a whole team to do that. So uh, I appreciate him putting that effort in. Now, let's, uh, let's check our fish and game forecast, okay? Brought to us by Mark Cowart of Edgewater Beach Realty. Okay, we're looking at our time at 3.30 a.m. this morning. And look at this afternoon. He, he swam off. But it's really 3.52 to 5.52. I don't know how it went off, but this afternoon now, 3.52 to 5.52 from about 4 to 6. 
It'll be a good time. It sort of coincides with yesterday, about 30 minutes later than yesterday. And that was a good afternoon, okay? Now, let's add some. Y'all are really good about bringing, putting, sending names in. I've got some more names to add today. But listen to the uh, where these people live. This is Marcus Parrish. Marcus is a great viewer. I run to him every now and then. He's a good outdoorsman. Keep up with him on Facebook. Marcus Parrish up there in Bear Creek, a good outdoorsman. Don Clemens, Bluntstown. Marilyn McGeechee, Clarksville. The McGeechee family watches all the time. Marilyn and David. David McGeechee up there in Clarksville. And Jimmy Demiri up here in Niceville. Got a very nice email from, from Jimmy and uh, his family. So that, that's four different locations of watching Panhandle Outdoors. And actually in three different counties right there. So we appreciate that. And continue to send them in now. Not only are we going to do our Friday drawings of, you know, of the seafood and all, but we're going to add things all year round, of, of rod and reels and, and feeders and binoculars and just add stuff on a monthly basis that we draw out of here. So it's a win-win situation. We enjoy giving it to y'all. We enjoy y'all uh, watching the show. So it was sort of a, a viewer appreciation, okay? Now, we're, uh, we don't have time to really. I have several other things. We're going to run out of time. So uh, let me do mention this. Your seasons are wrapping up, and so i go over the seasons tomorrow. But also... Uh, I wanted to mention in January, don't let January get away from you without doing a boat check. Make sure you, you check your, your boat. You make sure you run your boat a little bit in January because that's usually the month, De December and January, those two months we're so busy doing other things we forget to run our boat and all. So, you know, check your gas. Make sure you got fresh gas. Don't run that old gas. I was by BJ's Marine the other day and we had to talk about it. We, and uh, he, they're still having problems with people running old gas. And, and people don't realize how quickly the gas gets old. And I, I didn't myself either, but it, it gets old quick. So uh, we're going to have to wrap things up. I hope you enjoy that video. And we've got more, some more pictures to show you tomorrow. A lot of good things coming on Panhandle Outdoors. So thank you for watching us. And you do something good for some other day. And have a great day. And God bless. Thanks for joining us for Panhandle on Tours with Winston Chester. Panhandle on Tours features hunting, fishing, and other activities and information to help you enjoy the great outdoors. Join us next time for Panhandle on Tours.